grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways through you. In your name, Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
A reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. You have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, 
For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. 
The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. And you, Lord, is our hope. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be ever present, O Lord, with those who are suffering from the coronavirus, Strengthen all who are on the medical front lines against COVID-19. Enable those in authority to make good and timely decisions about matters related to the virus. Help us all to do what we can to slow the spread of the disease. Empower the church to be the church in creative, calm, and compassionate ways and bring this pandemic to a swift end so that lives are spared. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the great thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your miserable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us say the prayer of St. John Chrysostom together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord 
to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in this name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Good to see you here on this warm summer morning. Also good to have those with us who are watching virtually as well today. Just another reminder that next Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., the church will be open for prayer. No services during that time, but this is just come and go as you can. Again, next Saturday between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Subscribe to the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his court. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of us of a certain age remember the days when research involved heading down to the local library, scouring the card catalog, which had actual paper cards in it, and searching by topic, author, or title. Perhaps we even had to ask the librarian to help get the information that we needed. Of course, the advent of the personal computer and the internet changed all that. And now, Googling a question is a quick way to get an answer. In fact, it's the first step for most of us. But even this involves physically typing some words on a keyboard and, well, 
In an age when information comes at us fast and furious, who has time for that? These days, all we need to do is punch one button and ask the robotic assistant in our pocket-sized smartphones to probe the questions of the universe. And not only can we generally get the information we're looking for right there in the palm of our hand, we can also get it in the voice, accent, and language that we prefer. Want the answers to your questions to sound smarter, for example? Well, then you can give your phone an English accent, which to most Americans automatically seems more intelligent. Even though your digital assistant can help you with a lot of information, such as the weather forecast, it's a lot less helpful with questions that are ambiguous or open-ended. Ask a question like, what is the meaning of life? And your phone is more likely to act like a politician and duck the question. Here are some examples from Siri, Apple's digital assistant. Question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Siri's answer, I check their calendars. They both have the same birthday. <laughs> Question, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Siri's answer, just because it could doesn't mean that it would. Question, where is Elvis Presley? Series answer, my sources say he has left the building. Now see, cute, right? But not terribly helpful. Sure, these are the kinds of questions you might fire off at your digital assistant if you're really bored. It's clear, though, that Siri and her ilk are not privy to all the answers in the universe, and certainly not the answers for some of the questions that keep us up at night. Questions such as, why is there suffering? Or, what is the purpose of life? For answers to these kinds of questions, you need to go to a voice that has a lot more bandwidth than your phone can access. You need to ask Yahweh. Obviously, King Solomon did not have a digital assistant at his disposal to muse on the big questions of life. But he did have a relationship with God. And God made an offer to the young king that makes Ceres' What Can I Help You With offer seem exceptionally lame by comparison. The God of the whole universe says to Solomon, Ask what I shall give you. Wow. Holy jump in Jehoshaphat. Can you imagine God coming to you tonight and saying to you, Ask for whatever you wish, and I'll give it to you. What would you ask for? Some would ask for wealth, no doubt. Others for a COVID-19 cure. Some may ask for a relationship, others for talents. Still others might ask for more wishes. The question, however, is whether we know what to do if we actually got what we wished for. Lottery winners, for example, see their wishes come true when they hit the big jackpot. But most lottery winners wind up miserable because they don't have a good plan for all that money. We might ask God for a COVID cure and good health, but then continue on with our Henry VIII style diet. We could request a special talent or ability, but then squander it in the wrong place. Maybe this is why this incident stands out in Scripture. After all, God doesn't make this offer very often. 
Solomon asked for wisdom, which is a really great response to God's offer. Instead of asking for something temporary to benefit himself, Solomon wanted a framework for managing his life and his leadership as the king of Israel. He recognized that on his own, he was young and inexperienced and did not know how to go out or to come in. How many young people would admit that? He needed help and a background from which to make good decisions. And so he asked for wisdom. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? Wisdom was also offered to the first humans, but they chose to take a shortcut to get it. Discernment between good and evil was something that Adam and Eve wanted when they ate the forbidden fruit. They listened to some bad advice, hoping to be like God. They forgot that true wisdom only comes from God and is only cultivated in humans through a relationship with God. Adam and Eve had wanted to make themselves the source of wisdom. And humans have been making that same mistake ever since. Which is why the difference between good and evil is often misconstrued in a fallen world. You see, you can't get real wisdom from a human source, even a digital one created by humans. For real wisdom, you have to lean into the best and only source, God. Solomon understood this truth, which he had no doubt learned by watching his father, David. He didn't treat God's offer like that of a magic genie, offering wishes that would benefit only him. But he understood that real wisdom is given to God's people so that it might be exercised on behalf of others. Solomon was more concerned about his people than he was about himself. He wanted to do right by them and to do right by God. His full attention was on asking God for the one thing that would bring real peace and prosperity to his kingdom. Solomon's request for wisdom pleased God so much that God also offered him the things that he didn't ask for. Riches and honor, an incomparable royal reputation and long life. But there was also a caveat. All these things would be added to Solomon if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments. For God, wisdom wasn't a one-time offer, but rather the product of a long relationship a constant asking and constant conversation between God and the king. Of course, we know how this all eventually turned out. Solomon became known for his wisdom and his riches, but he gradually began turning his attention away from God and away from wisdom toward the lesser things that God had given him. He turned to his gold, to building up military might, and to alliances via marriage to foreign princesses. These were the very things that God had warned the kings of Israel to avoid. He 
And so Solomon, Solomon eventually became ineffective and unwise because he stopped connecting with God. Solomon's story is a cautionary tale for the people of God. We need wisdom to be able to discern good and evil. But are we asking for it? Are we cultivating it daily in our relationship with God? James warns us to ask the right questions. You do not have because you do not ask, he says. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Without wisdom, our desires become twisted, as Solomon's eventually did. And we fail to ask for what we really need. James, in a manner of speaking, invites us to follow the example of the young Solomon. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Our approach to the questions of life will be altered if we ask for a daily dose of wisdom, drawing near to the Lord in prayer and in reading the scriptures. When we cultivate a lifetime relationship with God, we will then learn to ask the right questions and to be ready for the answers that God will give us. No need to ask Siri.
please kneel. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.